Snapper Shark was playing hide and seek with his friends Sally Seahorse, Sandy Swordfish, and Reggie Ray when he heard his mother calling him. Snapper Shark was so much bigger than his friends that he found it difficult to find something large enough to hide behind. He had been delighted when he'd spotted the old shipwreck. He hid behind it and was determined not to move until his friends found him. Snapper, it's time for dinner, Susie Shark called again. Snapper Shark remained motionless behind the old ship and waited patiently for his friends to find him. Snapper, Susie Shark called again. Snapper Shark pretended that he couldn't hear her and stayed perfectly still. Found you, Reggie Ray cried, suddenly appearing right in front of Snapper Shark's nose. I think your mother's calling you, he added. I know, I'd better go, Snapper Shark said reluctantly. But wait for me, I'll eat my dinner as quickly as I can so that I can come out and play again, he said. Snapper Shark waved a fin at his friends and swam into the large cave which his mother had converted into a comfortable home for them. Susie Shark crossed her fins. Snapper, your dinner's getting cold. Didn't you hear me calling you? she asked. Sorry. I did. I was just having such good fun. I found this wonderful old shipwreck. It's a perfect hiding place, Snapper Shark explained honestly. Susie Shark sighed. Well, her son might not listen to her half of the time, but at least he always told the truth. It's crunchy lobster pie tonight. Don't eat it too quickly, she warned. Snapper Shark was eager to go out and play again so he ignored his mother's advice and gulped his food down as quickly as possible. He bit on a particularly hard bit of shell and his tooth wobbled. He prodded it with his tongue and he could feel it move again. He frowned. Surely he must have imagined it. He took another bite and his tooth came out. Snapper Shark spat it out in horror and it rolled across the table and fell onto the floor. Mummy! he wailed. Susie Shark laughed. <laughs> You've only lost a baby tooth, she said. But I don't want a gap. I'm going to look silly, Snapper Shark cried. Don't worry, you'll grow another one, Susie Shark said. You'd better pick that one up and put it under your pillow so that the tooth mermaid finds it, she added. The tooth mermaid? Snapper Shark queried. Yes, Susie Shark nodded. She will collect the tooth while you're asleep and when you wake up tomorrow morning you'll find a beautiful shell in its place. Really? Snapper Shark was intrigued. Yes, really, Susie Shark assured him. Snapper Shark picked up his tooth and examined it closely. He gave a little stretch. I'm tired, he said. Are you? Don't you want to go out and play again after dinner? Susie Shark asked in surprise. Snapper Shark shook his head. No, I think I'll go to bed now, he said, clutching his tooth to him. OK, I'll come up and read you a story in a minute, Susie Shark said. I'm too tired for a story, Snapper Shark replied. The quicker I go to sleep, the quicker the tooth mermaid will come, he said eagerly. Oh, I understand, Susie Shark said with a smile. She kissed him goodnight. Snapper Shark wasn't really tired, but he forced himself to count fish until he eventually fell asleep. When he woke up the following morning, he searched beneath his pillow and found a beautiful shiny cream and pink shell, just as his mother had promised. He clasped it in his fin and ran to the bathroom to examine his gap in the mirror. He didn't mind it so much now. He couldn't wait to show his friends. He gazed back down at the sparkly shell. He would have to put it in his box of special treasures. Hopefully, he would lose another tooth very soon.